Howdy, it's Rick from Dreamside Out again. I'm still talking about the van, but uh, I'm gonna have to do that while I'm en route to a music festival, so bear with me. Like, 
I'm the, I'm the evil truck on the road. You know, even though it's a small truck, people hate being behind a box van. In fact, I'm going to let this uh, the Sprinter van get in front of me. He keeps wanting to get over, but but people, you can just feel their frustration. They'll they'll cut out in front of you really quick if they see you coming because they don't want to get behind you, and they'll. If you, if you do get in front of them, they're just horribly frustrated. They'll get right up on your tail and, and zoom around you. And I've been flipped off so many times by people that, I, you know, I, I haven't even, I haven't been doing anything wrong. I'm very, I'm very decent when I'm driving. I try to get in the slow lane, take it easy. But I'll tell you, people just can't stand you when you're on the road in a box van. One of the things I do sometimes when I'm driving along on a hot day, um, like right now, I can open up this and I have my air conditioner on and I can just put it on really high. I don't have it on high at the moment because I don't want to mess up the audio on, on the camera here, but I can have it kind of high and just pump cold air into the box get it kind of cooled down and uh, that helps later on for when I park. Well I'm traveling from Everett, Washington clear down to Portland, Oregon and that's going to be a little bit of a drive. It's going to be about a two and a half, three hour drive at least. Uh, I'm going to have to go through several traffic jams. One in Seattle which I haven't gotten to yet and then another one probably in Tacoma and then a another one in Olympia and maybe it'll be thinning out a little bit by the time I get to Portland, Oregon but I tell you Interstate 5 between Everett and Portland is just jammed in the afternoons it's you know this this area around here unfortunately has become a lot like Los Angeles in terms of traffic uh, in the afternoons especially and in the morning commute it's just one big traffic jam. Right now, at this very moment, I'm surprised it's running kind of kind of smooth, but I'm expecting any minute to end, end up in a, in a jam. And here we go, <laughs> as I'm speaking. Okay, so I pulled in to Portland just a little while ago after a, a long drive going through a lot of traffic jams. Um, I'm parked on the side of a road in a spot that says two hour parking, but it has no time limit on it. It doesn't say between such and such hours. It just says two hour parking. I don't know how well it's enforced. It's on kind of a busy area. There's lots of noise around here. Um, the places I was hoping to park turns out to be uh, zoned parking where you have to have a permit and so I'm, I'm not going to chance parking there because I'll probably get tapped on by a, by a cop or get a ticket or a fine or something if I try to park there. But anyway, I can park here for at least two hours according to the sign. 
and I'm just going to kind of sit here and relax for a bit and scope it out and kind of think what my next move is because uh, it's getting kind of close to bedtime. I've been driving for a while after work and I'm kind of tired. Let, <clears throat> let me give you a look out the window here, out the front, so you see what it's like. Turn off the lights here. You see out here, there's... I'm in a busy place, right? I can hear lots of, lots of activity right out there. And that can be good or bad. <laughs> you know, it's kind of... I'm not secluded, so I'm not really subject to being messed with necessarily. But then again, uh, you know, it could have drunk people coming out of bars and stuff. Uh, but anyway, this is one of the reasons I like the box fan right now. <clears throat> okay, so, you see, there's no windows in here. Nobody out there has a clue that there's a guy in here. For all they know, it's just a truck parked on the side of the road. And I like it that way. I can, I have a, a sense of kind of privacy, and I don't feel super vulnerable. I feel like I'm protected somewhat. And I just can kind of sit here and relax for a while. But I'm not going to park here all night. I'm going to probably have to move on to another spot. But anyway, that's the progress report. Well, <clears throat> waking up this morning in Portland, Oregon. Looks like it's a nice day out there. Got to get my self out of bed and get going because uh, I got to and do a little bit of uh, stuff on my laptop and then I'm gonna go over to the Blues Festival. It opens up at 11 o'clock. So the uh, solution to locking the door goes to uh, uh, one of my viewers by the name of Brad KW and he he suggested why don't you just use a little clamp or something like that in the in the track. And let me show you. That's exactly what I did. These little C clamps, you just clamp them right in there, see, in the rails, and the door is locked. It's locked from the inside, and I can easily just take those off and open the door. Uh, this very moment, however, I do have it locked up from the outside as well, because I just rolled into uh, Portland last night and I wanted to keep it locked from the outside. Um, just, you know, I'm just not in a situation here where I wanted to take the lock off from the outside. I still got to kind of work that out, you know, when, I, when I'm going to use this configuration. <clears throat> but it gives me that option now. If I take the, the lock off and, and unlatch the door out there, um, I can still lock it here. I have already done that a few times when I park in a, in a more of a, a place that's out of the city. Uh, where it's a, more of a country setting, I, I do that, and I can actually lock it with the with the door open just a little bit. As you see, the inside of the door needs to be finished. I'm not gonna paint this or do something. I haven't done that yet. That's just one of the you know kind of ugly sides of the the van build. But anyway, that that little. Uh, uh, tip goes to Brad K. Thanks a lot, man. That was a, a good tip. That really helped me a lot. And I'd like to contact you personally about that. So, uh, thanks a lot. Okay, I'm on foot walking to the Blues Festival now. It's uh, kind of early for it. But uh, I really like Portland, man. This is a nice, nice place. It's kind of kind of like Seattle used to be. It's, it's still got the character in these neighborhoods and uh, I felt very safe parking where I parked last night it was in a, in a nice neighborhood that uh, around some apartment buildings you know there's lots of trucks and trailers parked on the street so I don't think I I don't look like I stand out um, you know it wasn't secluded it was just enough exposure to be uh, you know, to feel safe all right, so I'm crossing the Hawthorne Bridge here over the Willamette River um, here in Portland, Oregon. 
and the Blues Festival is right over there. Looks like the bridge is going to raise here, so it's going to be a little bit of time. Well, I got the full drawbridge experience here, so that was kind of interesting. Now all the people are going across. I'm going to tell you, this is the coolest uh, music festival I've ever been to. Um, I don't know why I've never come to the Blues Festival down here before, but Oregon knows what the right kind of music is, I'll tell you that. They do. Yeah, sure. 